Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the armor, a new 5 inch freestyle quadcopter by Rush FPV. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the Almo 5 inch drone which is pre-built, available in both analog and digital versions and with or without a TBS Crossfire Nano SE receiver, a single set of Ethix S5 5-inch propellers, two 25cm long high-quality battery velcro straps, STP hobby stickers, some spare screws, and the boxes and accessories of the Blade Sport 50 Amperes BLL32 SC and F722 digital or analog flight controllers, which are featured in the Amo 5-inch build. As for its specs, the Amo features the new Reactor 2207 1960KV 6S motors by Rush FPV, which pretty soon I'm going to feature in a dedicated video. The digital version features the Cadex Vista digital transmission system, the original DJI camera, and the longer version of the Rush FPV Cherry LHCP antenna. On the back of the quadcopter, mounted inside the 3D printed TPU part, which also secures the Immortal T antenna, you can find the BN22 GPS unit. On the center of the frame, well protected by removable molded plastic parts, you can find the Rush FPV Blade Super, 50 amperes BLA32 ESC, a power filter board which is equipped with two capacitors, and an F7 flight controller. The frame, which by the way is also available separately, supports micro-sized FPV cameras and the side carbon fiber plates of the camera are protected just like the stack using removable molded plastic parts. In addition, the wheelbase of the frame is 215mm and it features a squashed X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 5mm. The arms are properly secured in their position using a central 3D printed TPU part which is going to reduce vibrations. On the center of the frame you can find both 20x20 20 20 and 30.5x30.5mm M3 mounting holes for mounting your stack and on the back of the frame 20x20mm 20 20 M2 mounting holes for mounting the VTX. An action camera can be mounted on top of the drone using this included 3D printed TPU part. Landing gear is also included and pre-installed on the drone. Without a battery, the Armo 5 weighs 428.3 grams and the total weight, including a 1300 mAh 6S battery by CNHL, is 664.6 grams. So the Armo 5 is definitely a little bit on the heavy side since it's using the extra protection gear for the frame and stack, but I can already go ahead and tell you after testing it out that when flying it on 6S batteries, it doesn't feel that heavy at all. As for configuring the Armo 5, here you can see a quick overview of the default beta flight settings that the quadcopter was shipped with. As always, these settings are included down below as a dump file, so in case you made a change and you would like to revert it, you can simply use it. In addition, unfortunately, the Armo 5 does not come pre-tuned, so you might want to adjust the default PID settings that it is using and by default, out of the box, the Betaflight GPS rescue feature is disabled so in case you'd like to use it, you should manually enable it but before that, in case you are not familiar with this feature, I recommend to check out my tutorial. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Rush FPV Almo 5. Overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that this quadcopter features a very impressive setup and the first thing that you are going to notice about it, in case you are going to get this quadcopter, is the high attention to details, which includes the protection of the motor wires, the 3D printed parts, and of course the molded plastic parts, which protect the stack, VTX and the frame. In terms of flight time, you can expect about 6 minutes using a 1300 mAh 6S LiPo battery without an action camera and between 4 to 5 minutes including an action camera like the Insta360 ONE RS which I've tested in this video, of course depending on how you fly. As I've mentioned before, despite the fact that this setup is a little bit heavy, the flight time is not bad at all 
and it feels quite agile in the air using a 6S battery. In addition, I really like the design and quality of this frame and I think that the only downsides that I found is that this quadcopter does not come pre-tuned, maybe it's going to be changed soon and in case I am going to get a better tune, I'm going to post it down below. And I also think that even though it's a minor issue, it could have been great if it came with another set of propellers. So considering everything that I've said, in my opinion, in case you are in the market for a new 5-inch freestyle quadcopter, you should definitely check out the Rush FPV Armor, as it is definitely one of the best options that are currently available. Now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.